Vasyl Lomachenko stops Jason Sosa in nine rounds. Sosa's corner actually pulled him out of the fight. Sosa put up a very spirited display. He showed some fairly decent head movement and defensive skills while trying to be aggressive and take the fight to Vasyl Lomachenko. He did manage to land a few shots. He landed some body shots. He landed a few head shots here and there. But the longer the fight went, we saw the typical Vasyl Lomachenko scenario unfolding in which he gradually overwhelmed his opponent. Lomachenko is not a one-punch knockout man. He has respectable power, but nothing spectacular. But the fact that he's able to land so many punches so consistently and his constant movement kind of mentally fatigues his opponents to the point where they just can't keep up. He's hitting them, then he's moving around the side. He's hitting them again. He's moving out of range. He's moving left. He's moving right. He's stepping this way, stepping that way. Mentally, they just get fatigued and they can't concentrate. They can't keep up with what he's doing. They can maybe do it for a couple rounds, but eventually they fall into this trance. And when they do, he's got them. That's when Vasyl Lomachenko puts his foot on the gas, steps up the pace, steps up his activity level, and goes for the kill. There are other fighters out there who get a bad press, I think, from HBO and many other people within the boxing fraternity who are skillful fighters, like Guillermo Rigondeau, for example. But I personally believe that some of the criticism that Guillermo Rigondeau gets, which somebody like Vasyl Lomachenko don't necessarily get, is actually valid. Because, yes, Lomachenko and Rigondeau are both very skillful fighters. Neither one of them are known for producing too many devastating knockouts, although you know they both have stopped people. They're primarily guys who are, are who are about their skills. But Vasyl Lomachenko throws a hell of a lot more shots and he tends to go for the kill more when he has a guy overwhelmed or in trouble than Guillermo Rigondeau does. Guillermo Rigondeau is more safety first than Vasyl Lomachenko. In my view, Lomachenko is more watchable generally than Rigondeau. Now, Rigondeau has had some fights where he went for the kill, but generally he's more conservative. He doesn't throw as many shots and there's just not that much going on in Rigondeau fight. Rigondeau is more of a counter puncher than Lomachenko is. Lomachenko is definitely more offensive. So whether you want to talk about HBO bias for or against certain fighters, I do believe that there are some critiques that people have of Rigondeau that are valid. So back to this Lomachenko Sosa fight. I think Sosa gave Lomachenko his toughest outing that he's had so far in his career other than Orlando Salido. Salido obviously beat Lomachenko. So, you know, you would understand him giving uh, Lomachenko a tougher fight than Sosa. But other than the Salido fight, I would say this was his toughest fight. Uh, he managed to stop Sosa in the end or Sosa's people pulled him out of the fight. But Sosa did have his moments, particularly early on. And I think he'd really looked and studied that Salido fight and there were some borderline body shots that went in from Jason Sosa, particularly in the first half of the fight. And that, again, was an Orlando Salido type tactic. In fact, Salido's body shots, a lot of them weren't borderline at all. They were blatantly low. Jason Sosa was kind of trying to go down that road. But ultimately, it didn't work. Vasyl Lomachenko made the necessary adjustments. And as I say, he did what he did. He adjusted and overwhelmed Jason Sosa in the end. And... I thought it was actually a good performance. It's great when a fighter can never get hit and dominate easily, but it's also impressive when a fighter can come through some kind of adversity, when he has an opponent in front of him that's putting up some sort of resistance and he can make adjustments on the fly to overcome whatever his opponent is doing. And that's what Vasyl Lomachenko did in this fight. Jason Sosa, credit to him, he put up a much better performance or much better fight than 
Nicholas Waters did. So he has to be commended. He's a tough man. He's a trier. But ultimately, just wasn't good enough. Who will be good enough to get in there with Vasyl Lomachenko and give him a serious test? Lomachenko's people keep talking about this Orlando Salido fight and dismissing it. Lomachenko's promoter, Bob Arum, seems very keen on the fight. Actually, is Bob Arum his promoter? I'm not sure. <laughs> I might have got that wrong, but I think he is. Uh, I know he's a HBO guy. But yeah, I think I'm sure Bob Arum is. Yeah, Bob Arum, Bob Arum is Lomachenko's promoter. Sorry. Arum seems keen on it, but... Lomachenko's trainer and his manager and you know even Lomachenko himself don't seem so keen on this Salido match and to me it's curious because a prideful fighter will want to avenge a loss. Amir Khan for example was criticized heavily for not rematching Bradis Prescott and I know the Bradis Prescott loss that Khan suffered was devastating a one round KO defeat whereas Lemochenko was beaten on points by um, Orlando Salido so different type of circumstances but still it's a loss so you would have thought a prideful fighter when he has the opportunity when he's thinking about legacy he'll go and try and avenge that loss whereas Lemochenko in his inner circle don't seem too keen on it at the moment they seem as though I mean the, the the words they're talking, you know, the words they're coming out with the acting as though we don't need to. Everybody knows Lomachenko's better than Salido, so we ain't got no need to go back there. But I think for legacy reasons, personally he should. If he has the opportunity to do so, I believe he should do so. Just to erase all doubts. Drop your comments in the comment section below. Let me know what you think about. Vasyl Lomachenko's performance against Jason Sosa. Who would you like to see him fight next? Do you think, like me, that he should go ahead and fight Orlando Salido and avenge that defeat? Or are you one of those people who thinks there's no point in him fighting Orlando Salido? If you are, then give me your reasons. There's no good saying, we all know he'd beat Salido. No, that don't wash with me. You don't know what's going to happen in the boxing ring until the two fighters actually get in there, particularly when you're going up against a guy who's previously beaten you. So I, that don't wash with me at all. Give me a better reason as to why you don't think he should fight Orlando Salido again. If there's better options on the table for a certain date other than Salido, fair enough. That's a decent reason. But if there's no better options for a certain date, tell me why he shouldn't fight Salido. Let me know. It's happening. I'm out.